all my fault. I can't save everyone. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're explaining the ending and post credit scenes of Spider Man No Way Home. Multiverse is a concept about which we know frighteningly little. For this video, we're looking at what this ending means for Spider Man, Doctor Strange, and the MCU as a whole. Naturally, this essay is crawling with spoilers. Remember, no spoilers. But Jamie, you are a spoiler. What did you think of No Way Home? Let us know in the comments. The ending of No Way Home shares some similarities to the 2007 comic storyline, One More Day. Unlike that infamous chapter in Spider-Man history, though, No Way Home earns its bleak ending, while also making some welcome alterations. In One More Day, Peter arranges a deal with the demon Mephisto. In exchange for saving May Parker, Mephisto undoes Peter's marriage to Mary Jane, her knowledge of him being Spider-Man, and the future daughter they would have had. This also results in Harry Osborn's resurrection. No Way Home doesn't retcon May's tragic death. It doesn't straight up rewrite history either. Rather, Peter allows Doctor Strange to execute the spell that will erase everyone's knowledge that he was Spider-Man, including MJ and Ned. The entire world is about to forget that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Wait, everyone? What's more, everyone forgets Peter Parker in the process. Although Peter attempts to remind his friends, he finds that they might be safer and better off without him. Thus, Peter carries the weight of being Spider-Man on his shoulders with nobody to share the burden. Dude! 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 <sighs> the ending may be a downer, but it feels like an appropriate stepping stone in Peter's journey. The original Spider-Man ended with Tobey Maguire's Peter turning down MJ and keeping his secret. I will always be your friend. Only a friend? Peter Parker? That's all I have to give. Andrew Garfield's Peter lost Gwen, but found the strength to carry on by himself. Tom Holland's Peter has almost always had a support group to confide in, be it friends, family, fellow Avengers, or happy. I just really miss him. Yeah, I miss him too. Loneliness is an essential part of Peter's character arc. So in order for Peter to fully mature from boy to man, he needs to be alone, at least for now. Peter's decision suggests that the next time we see Spider-Man will be the darkest yet. The first post credit scene also hints at dark turns to come. 80 billion light years of hive knowledge across universes would explode your tiny little brain. What? What does that even mean? Well, let me give you a taste then. At the end of Venom Let There Be Carnage, Eddie was transported from his universe to the MCU. This raises a few questions. We now know that Doctor Strange's spell caused people who know Peter's secret identity to cross over between universes. Hello, Peter. So why would the spell affect Eddie and Venom? What's happening? No, 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 no. What the hell is that? Oh, that's, uh, that's just a towel. When Venom looks at the TV screen in Let There Be Carnage, it almost seems as if he knows Peter from somewhere. Before crossing over, Venom was preparing to share the symbiote's knowledge of the multiverse. The symbiotes are connected through a hive mind, which transcends space and time. So even if this Venom doesn't know Peter personally, he might have picked up his secret identity from the hive. Parker. Topher Grace's Eddie learned Peter's secret in Spider-Man 3. Maybe Venom recognized Peter through him or another variant. Hey, Parker. My God, Eddie. Ooh, my spider sense is tingling. <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Still at the beach, Eddie and Venom receive an MCU recap from a bartender. It might just be us, but we think the bartender has a variant who plays for AFC Richmond. Football is life. Anyway, after hearing Bruce Banner's superhero name, Venom argues that Lethal Protector suddenly doesn't sound so lame. Where will we go? I don't know. I don't know. Anywhere that needs a Lethal Protector, I suppose. Oh! You really meant it! 
Yeah. Lethal Protector was notably the name of the limited series that saw Eddie take center stage and further his evolution to antihero. Before they can book a flight to New York, Venom and Eddie disappear, presumably returning to their universe. Tom Hardy's cameo isn't a mere throwaway gag, however. Part of the symbiote is left behind, and it's hungry for a host. We all know what that means. Danny Rojas is getting superpowers. Okay, that's our last Ted Lasso joke. Chances are the symbiote will make its way to New York, meaning the alien costume saga is totally coming to the MCU. What is this? Considering that Peter has never been more isolated, this is the perfect time to bring the black suit into the equation. Peter was almost driven to take Norman Osborn's life before Maguire's Spider-Man intervened. Peter, stop! Stop! It's me! Without guidance or support, Peter could succumb to the symbiote and fully embrace his dark side. Good riddance. Peter's experiences with the alien costume could also show him the importance of friendship and why Spider-Man can't keep doing this by himself. He may even get help from another red-clad superhero who understands the hardships of keeping a secret identity. Take your shot. Charlie Cox's Matt Murdock is officially part of the MCU, and Wilson Fisk is the big bad in Hawkeye, so a Spider-Man Daredevil team-up seems inevitable. Well, that's the guy I've been worried about this whole time. Kingpin. While we will have to wait a while for the next Spider-Man film, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness is coming in 2022. No Way Home's second post credit scene is essentially a trailer for the Doctor Strange sequel. In a voiceover, we can hear somebody telling Strange that his desecration of reality will not go unpunished. This is more than likely Chiwetel Ejiofor's Mordo, who vowed to leave the world with fewer sorcerers at the end of the first Doctor Strange. Why are you doing this? Because I see at long last what's wrong with the world. The desecration of reality line could be alluding to Strange's spell in No Way Home, the time heist in Endgame, Strange's bargain with Dormammu, or something that hasn't happened yet. This is time. Endless, looped time. A blast from Strange's past also pops up in the trailer. Rachel McAdams as Christine Palmer. Evening, handsome. With the exception of a What If episode, we haven't seen Christine since the first Doctor Strange film. She's getting married in the clip, and while Strange is in attendance, he may not be the groom. It looks more like Strange is just a guest. We don't know if Christine got blipped along with Strange. If she wasn't, Christine might have moved on after five years. Even at the end of Strange's first movie, their relationship status was kind of iffy. I don't want you to know. There's no time to dwell on romance as Strange seeks help from Wanda Maximoff. Following the events of WandaVision, she's still living in isolation and repenting for her actions in Westview. Strange offers her a shot at redemption, recruiting the Scarlet Witch to help restore the multiverse. Wanda isn't the only one seen helping Strange in the post credit scene. We get brief glimpses of Sochi Gomez as America Chavez, aka Miss America. Chavez knows a thing or two about dimension hopping. In the comics, she visits Earth-212, where a teenage Loki tries tricking her into doing his dirty work. Given Loki's role in unleashing the multiverse, we may see him and Chavez interact in Multiverse of Madness. But someone is coming. Countless different versions of a very dangerous person, and they're all set on war. We need to prepare. Mordo and his sick new haircut aren't the only enemies Strange will face. A green, tentacled creature is briefly seen fighting Strange. This could be Shuma Garoth, an enemy of Strange in the comics, and an extra-dimensional multi-angled one. The biggest bombshell comes as Strange encounters the greatest threat to his universe, himself. Do not be frightened, old friend, for we are one and the same. This sinister variant is most likely Doctor Strange Supreme, who caused his universe to collapse in Episode 4 of What If. You more than anyone else should understand that meddling with time and events only leads to more destruction. Despite initially ignoring his calls for help, the Watcher later enlists Strange Supreme to help take down Infinity Ultron. 
Season 1 seemingly ends with Strange Supreme being redeemed as he agrees to look after a pocket dimension. That pocket dimension cracks if they escape. I'll watch. I have nothing but time. Strange Supreme might be up to his old tricks again in Multiverse of Madness. Christine could also play a key role here, as it was Strange Supreme's inability to save his love interest that resulted in his universe's undoing. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Several other things remain up in the air. Now that Ned has forgotten Peter, will he ever remember his magic connection? Will Peter tell MJ the truth, or could the MCU's Gwen Stacy enter the mix? Hey guys! Is that Michael Keaton's Vulture in the Morbius trailer, or what? Michael Morbius. Got tired of doing the whole good guy thing, huh? What's up, Doc? Whatever awaits, Doctor Strange will return, Spider-Man will return, and will return when the next MCU movie arrives. What's happening? They're starting to come through, and I can't stop them. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.